Hello everyone and welcome to more experiments in Realism Overhaul Sandbox Mode. And in this episode, as you can see, I have a Concord. Now, I've tried my very, very best to make this as accurate as possible. Um, the length is 61.7 meters, and that's rounding up from the Concorde 61.66 meters, I believe it is. Um, the width had to be, the wingspan had to be a little bit longer because the body width is larger. Uh, I could scale this tank, but the problem was this wonderful Concorde cockpit from the stock, lack stock extension mod. Uh, does not have scaling on it. I could probably have added tweak scale, but uh, I kept it as is just in case it caused problems with any animation or something like that. So uh, it does have an animated nose, right? Yeah. And um, we, I, uh, I counted the number of windows. I really did. Uh, but I did move one window from the back here over to the front um, just to make it easier on myself. So, yeah. The wings I tried to curve. The fuel is in the wings. You can see kerosene in there. Kerosene, kerosene, kerosene. Uh, oh, I didn't fuel the outer tanks because, um, well, I've been having trouble getting it off the ground. Let me put it that way. So, yeah, we are keeping the outer tanks unfueled. And if we take a look, uh, our thrust weight ratio is now 0.53, which is interesting. It seems to me that there must be something weird. Yeah, there must be something weird. Because these are Rolls-Royce uh, Snecma Olympus 593 engines based on... I, I've given them the correct amount of thrust. Though Advanced Jet Engines does have a lot of numbers that I'm not entirely sure of. I did get the compression ratio. That's one thing that I made sure I got the right thing for. Uh, and the dry non-afterburning thrust and the afterburning thrust. The Concorde does require its afterburners to get off the ground. The mass of the engines is correct. 169.2 uh, kilonewtons with afterburner, 139.4 kilonewtons without. Um, the specific fuel consumption, I'll, uh, I really need to check. Uh, that might be a little bit off. But given that uh, filling the wings up has produced a good one hour and 29 minute um, time, I think that's probably accurate because the Concorde was able to carry a heavier fuel load than what we're carrying right now. Uh, we're carrying 49 tons of fuel and it carried I think about 70 tons or something like that. Uh, the dry mass of the real Concorde was 77 tons if I recall correctly and um, we were only 80 tons because we have a reserve fuel tank here in the tail where there was one uh, there was a fuel tank there and so if we take that fuel out it's uh, 76 tons so we're a little bit light okay but uh, yep that's uh, in fact if we unlock that tank one hour and 37 minutes and if we fully fuel it we'll have more uh, we do have a little bit of fuel at the bottom of these fuselage pieces, which I believe the Concorde did have. So I've, I've tried, I've really tried. Uh, the problem is actually getting it off the ground. So let's, let's go out to runway and try that. Okay, so if you noticed in the VAB, I named this Concorde ALG, and that's because of adjustable landing gear. And therein lies our first problem. Uh, first of all, it tends to want to drift back, and second of all, the brakes don't work. So, yeah, there's, there's no appreciable braking going on. So, that's a problem. Now, another problem is uh, the runway and the fact that the wheels, uh, well, okay like that. Now I didn't do anything, that was just the uh, wheels popping up from the runway. And now we only have one pair of engines, so let's not do this. No brakes though! Oh, We are, we, we are not seeing Concorde get destroyed. Let's revert. Another problem is that despite the fact that I've... Oh, look at that. You know, maybe adjustable landing gear and the stock landing gear aren't too much different, come to think of it. 
Uh, maybe maybe it'd be better to go off of the runway. I know it that won't look good, but I think this might be a good theory to test. I don't know. Here we go. Off runway excursions. Yeah, even though I made the wingspan a little bit generous and overall it's carrying less fuel load, it seems to have a really high uh, takeoff velocity. So if you guys have any ideas about that, feel free to share. Oh, we just lost something or another. Uh, well, I'm going to try and take off anyway. Okay, maybe not. We have one engine left. Come on. One engine. You can do it. Oh, this is not good. Okay. Okay. All right. Hmm. Maybe we'll try the stock, stock landing gear one and you can take a look at how that works or not. So this is it with stock landing gear, and you'll notice I've done something. Um, I've got a decoupler here and a little platform, and that's because if the landing gear is deployed right at the start, it tends to destroy the whole thing. Um, yeah, so that's bad. Oh, by the way, uh, you might have wondered about uh, crew capacity. These are actually just heavy structural fuselages uh, with little uh, airliner windows tacked on. But I tried to put clip in Mark II, uh, sorry, Mark I crew cabins, but for some reason instead of having the proper capacity, which if we take a look here, so you can see there it says crew capacity 4, and if it did have a crew capacity of 4, we would have the right number of passengers. Unfortunately, um, if we take a look at crew here, uh, it somehow reduces to 1. So I don't understand that. But anyway, we do have some passenger capacity, if you were wondering about that. Also, I tried my best to emulate the Concorde. It has a little sort of a canard-ish thing there, sort of a whisker. And it's also got something on the tail like that. I tried to make them such that they helped with the aerodynamics in FAR. Seemed like a good idea. Um, it, it doesn't really have very good aerodynamics unless it's at higher speed. Um, even then, some issues, some issues, still some issues. Uh, that one's solved. Happy times. Um, uh, if we go up to an altitude, though, let's say, okay, Mach 1 at 5 kilometers it can handle. 8 kilometers. 10 kilometers, that one's still iffy. I always have the worst trouble getting that one green anyway. But 1.2. The faster we go, the better off it is. <laughs> I suppose that's not too much of a surprise. You know, going high and fast, uh, this thing is a uh, champ. Uh, going low and slow, not so much. There it is, sitting on that little platform. Now, so one problem that might be occurring is that I've got the wrong numbers for advanced jet engines with these Rolls-Royce engines. But there wasn't one properly configured, so I had to do my best uh, uh, using a comparable engine. But there's really no comparable engine. I had some numbers to work with, but not all the numbers. And these are unique engines, so yeah. Okay, so first of all, landing gear down. Uh, SAS on, and get rid of that thing. Okay, it's got a little bit of a bounce, but not too bad. Now these have working brakes, which is sort of important for trying to warm up the engines first before actually taking off. But you can see it's bouncing. Look at it bounce. Um, I've well, I don't know if it shows numbers, but I did try to turn the spring and stuff down. 
So, yeah. Okay, here we go. At least we can try. Now, I'm not going to try and rotate it until it's got some good speed to it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to keep my hand off of the joystick so you can see where the runway might cause a bounce. That is not intentional. But at 100, I'll grab it and pull up. Okay. Starting to pull up. I want to be very careful. One part of this is missing is the tail uh, bumper gear. So mainly I'll just wait until we reach the end of the runway. Oh boy. It's tough. It's tough. Okay. Yeah, so I've got some problems. Uh, the landing gear is pretty close to center mass, so it's not that the landing gear is too far back. I could do more smoothing out the wings if we made more wing pieces here. But I might have been incorrect in my assessment that the adjustable landing gear one was better than this. This was somewhat smoother. Oh, maybe it was because I didn't have the nose down. Hmm. I don't know if that has any effect. If only Smart ASS, not Smart ASS, SAS could hold on to it. I know there are some autopilot mods. Uh, perhaps you could suggest some of those. It's been a long time since I've flown aircraft. This is 1.1.3, so whatever mod you suggest uh, has to be in 1.1.3, but any of the any aviation mods you would care to name that might help out would be appreciated. Right now, uh, as far as part mods are concerned, stock extensions obviously, B9 airspace a given, fire spitter uh, without the biplane parts because I don't think I'm going to use those, B9 procedural wings obviously, um, KAX, KAX I've got an airplane plus some version or another now the the real Concorde engines have a very interesting nozzle uh, I, I tilted them down to help with the balance so that's why you see they're tilted down but if you take a look at the nozzle on the Concorde it's it's not a simple contraption at all that's probably why we don't have an equivalent of these jets in uh, Realism Overhaul. They are sort of important jets to have. So I, uh, I was somewhat surprised they're not there, but there's no model that would do them justice, I guess. I'm, I'm hands off right now, that's why it's doing the pitch oscillation thing. I could probably study it, but. We'll wait until we get to the critical part of all this, which is trying to break Mach 1. What is our crew capacity right now? Well, we've got three crew, three crew in ship and uh, 12 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. So, uh, well, with the appropriate amount of passengers, uh, we, we probably need to carry more food, water, and oxygen, don't we? Okay, uh, we need to accelerate now. Come on. Oh, it's pitched up quite high for an uh, airliner. Oh, I should mention with stock extensions, I lightened this portion here. I tried to lighten the tail cones, the stock tail cones, to make it match a little bit better, but that did not work out. I tried saving the DDS file and that didn't look right at all. So I had to revert and so we got a darker tail. Uh, if I could get if I could have gotten the tail the right color, I would have probably lightened these heavy structural fuselages as well. And then we could have had a good color to it. Don't know about this stripe, but I'll take it for now. These air intakes, I believe, are from B9. Uh, oh, uh, these are actually parts from Lackluster Labs. So, to give the boxy shape. Lackluster Labs is great for boxes. 
Yeah, actually, these Lackluster Labs tanks are configured to hold various things, but none of it appropriate to the job, so right now they're configured for war, but are empty. I think I actually added a methane and oxygen configuration to them, so if we really wanted to do a Mephalox Concord, we could do that. Actually, one reason I wanted to build the Concord as we see that it actually has uh, these helping to maintain a uh, upward pitch. I hope that's alright. We are past the speed of sound, by the way. That crept up on me. 1.11. Let's keep this up. High dynamic pressure because we're a little bit low to be doing that. So let's pull up here. The, the flap piece that's on top of the engines does not move. So that's okay. Yeah, see, uh, you see it's nominal now. It's not good to break the speed of sound at a low altitude. Not for, you know, a delicate airframe like the Concorde. Well, I don't know if it's that del delicate, but still, you want to be careful. At some point, we have to turn back around, huh? Um, it might be better to do that at a lower speed. So, I'm actually going to start turning now. It seems like a good idea. Let me center the view. Let's see how it turns. Remember airliner, not jet fighter, airliner. Um, <laughs> I swear, I used to play Microsoft Flight Simulator a lot, but I haven't recently, like ever since I picked up Kerbal. And I'm pretty sure that all of my flight skills have just been destroyed. Just been destroyed. Um, in fact, I know they've all been destroyed. Um, we, we were having some aerodynamic issues. I can't, uh, I, I'm, I'm not able to turn it. Actually, why is it not, it doesn't seem to be taking my input. Let me take SAS on. Oh. No, we have electric charge all right, okay. Um, okay, now it's taking my input. For a little bit there, it wasn't taking my input for some reason. Sorry for the high g-forces, but yeah, it wasn't responding to me. Weird. Okay, finally making a smooth turn, jeez. All that jostling around. Now, if we had real runways all over the place instead of having to shift the space center each time, it'd be nice to do a world tour with this thing. I wonder about their thrust. Well, the thrust is actually going down as we go up. There must be some number in AJE where I can get them to... Wow, that was a sudden jump. Went from 74 to 62 kilonewtons. Let's go down a bit. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, there's a definite uh, boundary there. Yeah, now it's 87. Oh, it went back to 73. 88. 89, 74. I don't understand this at all. I clearly have done something very wrong. By the way, the, its uh, read output was supposed to be like 150 to 160. Sorry, people of Florida, you're going to get uh, sonic booms. 500 meters per second, 1.59 Mach. Mach velocity is still increasing. 10 kilometers altitude, 554 meters per second, 1.8 is our Mach number. Okay, approaching Mach 2. We have broken Mach 2. 608 meters per second now, 11.4 kilometers altitude. Thrust is still good. Let's see how fast it goes keeping in a straight line, which means I might not be landing this thing this time, because we're getting pretty far away from Cape Canaveral now. I don't know, maybe I got the numbers on these engines better than I thought I did. Here we are at Mach 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 24 or it we will see. If we get to Mach 3, I, I'll probably have to reconsider the engine numbers 
as being a little bit too... Well, on the other hand, you know, we aren't exactly carrying a full fuel load here. I don't know how fast it would have gone empty. I suppose that the speed limit on it is actually structural rather than rather than because of engine power. That's usually the case for planes. It's more of a structural limit than an engine power limit. And we don't have the fine details, everything, uh, the wings are all uh, supersonic, but it doesn't say anything more than that. Like, uh, are you talking about Mach 2 supersonic, or are you talking about Mach 3 supersonic? I think the level flight limit's something like 2, well, I don't know, it's still accelerating while I'm pulling up here. 276 kilonewtons, I didn't think it was rated that high. I thought the max number was supposed to be lower than that. Okay, well, I'm curious about high velocity turning. Especially since I don't think I want to do the whole flight back anyway, unless we are going very fast. Let us, uh, well, we, we, we won't go full thrust here. Uh, and Concorde didn't cruise at full thrust anyway. We probably have a very realistic fuel load considering that. Hmm. Even though I throttled down, it's not. Oh, there we go. I was wondering why the afterburner was still on. Oh, okay, afterburner is on. Okay, there we go. It would probably cruise without afterburner, is what I was about to say. This is not doing too badly, as long as I don't turn very quickly. What's this island over here? This island. I'm gonna have to check the map. I recall some strange island when when passing over the Gulf of Mexico previously I I saw a strange island that did not belong. I'm gonna check on that. Okay, let's give it a little bit more power. I mean, it's got a lot of thrust even without the afterburners, you noticed in the VAB. I think it's got like 130 kilonewtons even without the afterburners. Now, my goal is not to make replicas necessarily, though I think, I think it's a good Concorde. But I want to try and make next generation space, not, not space, but, well, maybe space, airliners of various kinds would be nice. The new version of this. Uh, even now, these engines are pretty good for what they do. They're not very efficient, you know, at sea level per se. They're particularly efficient going at Mach 2, is the thing. Okay. I'm just cutting the engines now, and we're gonna descend. I don't have any air brakes on here. I don't know if I don't know if Concorde actually had air brakes. Okay, we're still a fair ways out. We're still past speed of sound. Let's pull up a little bit to slow down here. Hmm, I'm not feeling like we're slowing down much. shut down the engines. We're ascending, but we're actually still at, you know, more than 600 miles an hour. Well, I guess that's one way of dumping velocity. As soon as we start going down, it goes up. We're more of a dart than I was hoping for. You're down? is being very optimistic considering our velocity. Let's see, can I dump some of it? Uh, we're still going really, really fast. I think I'm gonna have to go around.
Let's start the engines up at low velocity here. It flies fairly well once it gets off the ground. The whole getting off the ground part is rather annoying. Nice sunset there. But the little numbers are sort of blocking my view of the actual runway. Oh, we're going down a bit. Hmm. Um, hmm. We have to keep quite uh, up angle in order to avoid going down. I need flaps. <laughs> I suddenly discover I need flaps. Flaps are important. I don't know, uh... Flap... You know, flap? Uh, this might not be the best time to start configuring them, though. Oh, there's the runway. Uh... Oh, heck, the runway is a pain in the rear anyway. Maybe I should land off of it. Okay, I'm gonna land off of it. Jeez. Okay. Touchdown. Brakes. We're going like 280, well, more like 300 miles an hour at touchdown. Uh, not, not great. What am I saying? Now, now we're reaching more like, well, not even there yet. Okay, now maybe real touchdown velocities. But, you know, it's it's landable. You know, it's landable, but we'll need to make sure to configure the flaps properly. It doesn't look like they've they're doing flappy it doesn't look like they're flaps at all right now. Hmm. Flap setting 0. Not active. Deflect more. Ooh, flap setting one. It still doesn't look like it's actually doing it. Okay. Right now it's sort of seasick because of the landing gear. Uh, it can't even recover. Uh, recover. Okay. So, well, there you go. The Concorde, as I have it. Um, if you have any solutions to various things like the runway problem, or have any mod suggestions, uh, I would be glad to hear those. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.